Okay, lesson one. In this video, all I'm gonna do is explain Photoshop's user interface. So there's some conventions, parts of the screen, parts of the application that are worth understanding before you try and do anything for two reasons. One, depending on your computer, your setup, things might look a little bit different. So being able to understand why Photoshop appears different to how it might look on my video in, in, you know on the screen here or in another video online and understand what's going on is important uh, equally there are actions you will take within photoshop that will actually change the user interface so you might be used to certain things you're going to learn being in a certain place and you do a couple of things and suddenly everything changes around and you think well what's happened so understanding some of these conventions around the user interface is going to help you navigate through the kind of features and uh, things you're going to learn as you go through so let's talk about the main parts of the screen in photoshop so right in the middle here we've got the sort of active document area that I'm working on. So if you open a photo, drag something in, that's gonna appear here. You can see, obviously the image is in the center, there's this gray space around it. Uh, I've got a ruler around that I can work with, which I'll talk about later. And then I can see the name of the document up the top there. Uh, this is the zoom level, so how far I'm zoomed in and out, and we'll definitely get into that later on. Uh, and there's some more information about the document that isn't too important at this stage. You'll see there's a little X here. So that will enable me to close this. Um, and in fact, this is a tab. So if I were to create a new document, if I go up to here, file new, uh, I'm just gonna click okay. It doesn't really matter what size it is. Then what you'll see is that new document appears here in this tab, and then I can switch between the two. So I've got, multiple documents at the same time that I can work with. And obviously the one I'm currently working on is highlighted a little bit more than the other one. You can change the colors of the user interface in Photoshop. So in some videos, including some of my older ones, uh, you'll see this whole user interface is darker, a darker gray. So that's a setting you can change for yourself. So don't get confused by that. That doesn't mean it's behaving any differently or acting any differently. I just happen to have the kind of lighter theme for Photoshop running at the moment. So that covers this area. And I mean, this is obviously the space you're gonna be looking at the most because this is where you're gonna be doing the work. On the left here, we've got the kind of main toolbar. So all these tools along here are gonna be things you frequently click on to do certain things to your document. Uh, so there's things like brush, which we'll, we'll be using a hell of a lot. There's this little box here, which is for making selections. And indeed there are other tools for making selections, which I'll get into in another video. You've got things like this, which will draw gradients. There's text for typing text on, text on screen. You can draw lines do various effects. Uh, and there's a kind of quick color palette you can use down here to track the kind of active colors you're working with if you were say painting with a color, that kind of thing. So this is really the main area you go to to work with tools on a document, whether you're doing kind of graphic design, typography, whether you're doing uh, photo retouching, trying to do stylistic things, um, th this is really the starting point. Now, as you work with tools, what you'll notice is when you click on some of those tools, so I'm gonna click the selection tool here, there's a menu bar at the top. So this strip right at the top, just under the kind of file menu up here and above the tabs where we've got the name of the document we're working on, there's a toolbar. And this will change depending on which tool you're working with. So you can see with the selection, there are options to do with the selection tool. I'm not gonna get into what they are at the moment. If I go to the brush tool, you can see it changes again. And now there's a different set of tools. So that's another little area of the interface you'll get used to. So you might click on the brush, then go up top to the menu bar and start making changes. Over on the right here is where things get messy because 
there's all sorts of panels which are arranged in various configurations. And this is the main thing that's going to look different and probably behave different uh, on you know, a given computer. So the way I've got this set up and arranged is specific to how I like to work. What you're seeing here is a whole bunch of different panels that all have different features you can work with within Photoshop. So you can see even with this panel up the top, there are three uh, you know, panels that are arranged in tabs, much like the main documents we're working on arranged in tabs. Then there's another one over here. I've got this one down here, et cetera, et cetera. So what's the relevance of these? Why are they arranged the way they are? Well, th this is something you can customize for yourself. So understanding what some of these panels do and the ones you will work with more frequently kind of goes to answering the question of why are things where they are, but it's very much an individual choice. Some of these panels like the layers panel are pretty, I mean, the layers panel is pretty much the most important panel in Photoshop for doing anything you're going to end up dealing with layers. So that's a whole topic by itself. Things like properties come into play when you work with certain types of layers. If you're working with, say, the brush and you want to uh, pixel certain colors, this color panel becomes very useful for, you know, moving all the way around the various uh, colors and you know, picking something quite specific. Uh, all of these panels are available under window here. So if I click up top, you can see they're all listed there. Some of these I don't even use. There's probably a couple of them. I don't even know what they do. Um, so it's a case of really understanding these one by one and just learning about each one and what it does and whether you're gonna probably wanna use it for the type of work you're doing. So for example, 3D, I never really do any work with. Typography, you would be working with things like character, which is where you can set font and font sizes. Uh, paragraph indeed will help for uh, more, you know, bigger text layout, that kind of thing. Now, having introduced you to the concept of panels, there's a few sort of user interface behavioral quirks that are worth understanding um, so you don't get tripped up by Photoshop doing things and you think, well, what happened there? One of the things you can do with panels is rearrange them. So if I decided I didn't want actions up here, I could click, drag, and move that down here. And you can see what that will do is move it from this kind of tab group here down to here. Other thing you'll see is there's this tiny little chevron which is at the top of the column I've got here with these two groups of panels. So that's going to affect both these two panels and these two below. You'll see there's one over here as well for this column. And indeed, there's one over here, which we'll get to in a moment. If I click that, what it does is it collapses all those panels into just little icons. And in this case, icons with the text. If I click it again, it'll open them back up. Same over here. So I can click that, open it back up. What you'll notice is I've got another kind of toolbar strip. Looks a little bit similar to the one over here, but these are actually panels. So if I open those up, you can see there's a whole nother set of panels down here. So it's a, sometimes you might struggle to find things, uh, and that can be because something a panel is either hidden behind one of these sort of collapsed toolbar strips here, or it might be in a tab that you're just not seeing. But it's worth understanding this and understanding how you can change it to either customize it for how you want to work with Photoshop or find things, reset things to how uh, you like to work with it. So that's really it for user interface basics. It's very much about the document or documents you're working with in the tabbed areas here. The toolbar over here is where you're gonna do most of your sort of active work of picking things you wanna uh, do to change the image you're working on. Once you've picked something like brush or selection or gradient, then you'll find this menu bar up the top gives you more options for the tool you've chosen. And then all of these panels you can work with over here, we'll get into one by one. Uh, and what you can do with those. A couple of last things just to touch on. Like I just showed you with the panels uh, doing the rearrangement with the actions, I'll just show you another quick things. 
you can actually drag the panels out and just make them float. So I've dragged that out and just let go. And now that panel is effectively just floating on top of the interface. So I can go ahead and work on the document and that will just stay there. I don't like to work with floating panels like that. I like them docked in the user interface. So again, it's just a case of clicking on the tab name, dragging it back in, and now it's kind of docked uh, in with that panel section down there. In the same fashion, you can actually do that with documents. So I could drag my main document here. If I click on the name and drag it down, you can see that actually floats that out. And then Photoshop kind of resizes the window around uh, the area of the image as it is zoomed in and that will float around. So sometimes it's useful to do these if you're kind of working with two things at the same time. Say you want to copy something from one image, one image to another. This can be useful. Another thing you can do is actually arrange documents side by side. So now I've got this one floated out. I can click on it again. And if I'm very, very careful and just drag it there, see how that uh, sort of bar separator between the blank document and the toolbar is lit up blue. If I let go, it will actually split the sort of active work area here. So now I've got two documents side by side rather than in tabs next to each other. If I want to get out of that, I can just click that tab again, drag it over to the other window. You can see that blue highlighting around that side is saying, hey, this is going to lock in and regroup effectively back to the tabs we had. So another little thing you can do there. Um, and indeed, the toolbar over on the left, which we started with, you can click that little uh, sort of grabber at the top there and drag that out and have that float. These are kind of things that uh, can sometimes happen by accident. And it's more useful to know this stuff so you know how to reset it and get it back the way you want in case something happens and you go, whoa, what's happened here? So I'm going to click that again, drag it to the side. You'll see that same blue highlighting appears, let go, and then it's back to normal. So that's it. That's the user interface tour. Uh, and in the next video, we'll start getting into some of the things you can do with Photoshop. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.